So now let me actually write out a convex optimization problem. So consider this convex optimization problem minimize fx subject to gi of x less than equal to 0. And ax equals b. So I going from 1 to m. A x equals b. Uh, so, A now is a matrix in R p cross n. Uh, so, it has p rows and we will assume that A is full row rank. Okay. So, in short rank of A is equal to p. Now, uh, we will assume so suppose f and all these gi's are convex okay and suppose p star is greater than minus infinity and attained. Okay, so, that means the optimal value of, of the primal is finite and it is attained by some point x that is feasible. Now, first little observation that is uh, quite easy to make is that and I will leave that as a, as a claim it is uh, very easy to prove that if f comma g i is i going from 1 to m, if these are convex, then g the set g is convex. Okay. So, to uh, if you want to see this, this this is not not hard to show. But if if the if these so how does uh, uh, how does one uh, one show this if you maybe we can uh, quickly uh, quickly take a look here so if so what we need to argue is that if u one v one t one and u two v two t two are in uh, are in G then every any convex combination of thereof is also in G so maybe I'll just show you the proof of this. Let us quickly do a proof of this. So, let uh, suppose u1, v1, t1 and u2, v2, t2, suppose they both belong, so they all belong to G. Then and let alpha in 0 comma 1 and define say um, u bar v bar t bar as alpha u 1 v 1 t 1 plus 1 minus alpha u 1 u uh, u 2 sorry u 2 v 2 t 2 ok. We need to show that u bar v bar. So, we need to show that u bar v bar t bar belongs to G ok. So, how would you show that? Well, you look at u bar. So, what does it mean to show this? We need to show that there exists 
that is we need to show there exists an x such that f x f x is less than equal to t bar g i of x less than equal to u bar u, u i bar and um, a x minus b okay, is equal to a x minus b is equal to v bar. Right. So, what have I done here? See, uh, notice that this is my this was my optimization problem uh, in uh, in the original form. So, to bring it in the in the form uh, as before, I have basically written this as a x minus b equal to zero. Okay. So, I had my uh, when I took points u one v one u one v one t one and u two v two t two the 0 got replaced by v 1 and v 2 respectively and now and now for this particular point I am looking for v bar. Okay. So, since u 1 v 1 t 1 and u 2 v 2 t 2 lie in a uh, line g. So, clearly uh, clearly we have that there exists x 1 uh, and um, use a superscript x 1 and x 2 such that f of x 1 is less than equal to t 1 g i of x 1 is less than equal to u uh, i 1 and a x 1 minus b equals v 1 and similarly f x 2 is less than equal to t 2 g i of x 2 is less than equal to u i u i 2 and a x 2 minus b is equal to v 2. So, now remember t t bar is what t bar is alpha t 1 plus 1 minus alpha t 2. Similarly, u bar is uh, alpha u uh, u 1 plus 1 minus alpha u 2 v bar is alpha um, alpha v 1 plus 1 minus alpha v 2. So, what I will do is I need to show that there exists ok let us call this x bar let there exists an x bar such that all this right. So, what I will do is take x bar as take x bar as alpha um, take x bar as alpha x 1 plus 1 minus alpha x 2. In that case, in that case, what would I get? Well, f of x bar since f is convex I would get that f of x bar is less than equal to alpha f of x 1 plus 1 minus alpha f of x 2 and that is uh, and that itself is is less than equal to alpha t 1 plus 1 minus alpha t 2 and that is and that is what that is simply um, T bar. Okay. Similarly, g i of x bar is going to be less than equal to alpha g i of x 1 plus 1 minus alpha g i of x 2 and that is equal to and sorry that is less than equal to alpha u i 1 plus 1 minus alpha u i 2 which is equal which is nothing but alpha u bar uh, sorry, which is nothing but it is not alpha which is nothing but which is nothing but 
u bar right and a x bar minus b is actually equal to a alpha x 1 plus 1 minus alpha x 2 minus b and that is equal to now what I will do is I will write this I will split this b as alpha b plus 1 minus alpha b and that will give me a alpha times a x 1 minus minus b plus 1 minus alpha times a x 2 minus b and this is equal to as you can check a x 1 minus b was equal to uh, v 1 a x 2 minus b is equal to v 2. So, it will be alpha v 1 plus 1 minus alpha v 2 and that is nothing but v bar ok. So, so in other words, so we can uh, we needed to show we needed to show that this uh, that this particular thing is true and we uh, that means that required us to show that there exists such an x bar that satisfies all of these and we were able to show that by taking x bar to be alpha x 1 plus 1 uh, 1 minus alpha x 2 where x 1 and x 2 are actually uh, the points that uh, the x 1 and x 2 that give you that because of which u 1 u 1 v 1 t 1 and u 2 v 2 t 2 are in g ok. So, what is this done? This is given us that we, uh, we by, by doing this what have we shown? We have shown basically this claim here ok. So, let just to make sure everyone is on track make, this is the claim that we have shown that if f and these g's are convex then then if these f's and g i's are convex then this set uh, g is also convex ok. So, now let me move uh, move forward to uh, to the to the uh, to the duality problem ok. Now, let me uh, define this another set ok. Let me define this set T as capital T as follows it is 0 0 s such that s is less than p star ok. So, what is this? Well, this is nothing but an open segment along the t axis it is a 0 0 s such that s is less than p star. So, it is an it is a segment that goes from minus infinity. So, if you or rather let me go back to the figure that I drawn here well it is it is it is a segment that starts uh, from minus infinity and goes all the way up till p star, but does not quite touch p star. So, it is open at p star. So, it is this segment ok. Now, this segment is obviously a um, so, this is obviously a convex set all right. Now, but uh, now the main uh, the, the the thing that uh, the thing that I uh, that is important for us is that t intersection g ok. The claim is that t intersection g is empty. Now, this may seem very natural because of the kind of figure I have drawn here ok. No wonder yeah, it has to be you would think that yes t intersection g is is non empty, uh, but it needs a bit of proof. So, for example, that g could very well do this right it could go down here and then intersect here again and so on. So, so that so we have to be we have to be a little careful and rigorous about about this particular argument. So let us do that ok. So, t intersection g is empty. So, suppose now suppose um, so, so proof again suppose u v t belongs to g Uh, sorry belongs to uh, suppose u v t belongs to uh, belongs to t then then it means that
uh, or rather let us put it this way let us start with suppose u v suppose u v t belongs to t intersection g ok. Now, if it belongs to g if it belongs to t then it means that u equals 0 v equals 0 u equals 0 v equals 0 and t is less than p star ok. But it uh, since it also belongs to g it implies that there exists an x such that f x is uh, is less than uh, is less than equal to t. So, there exists an x such that f x is less than equal to t g i of x is less than equal to 0 and a x minus b is equal to 0 ok. But then t itself ok uh, is less than p star from here. So, if t is less than p star it means that there exists an x which is feasible. So, by this feasible for p such that the value of such that f of x is less than the optimal value of p. So, what does this mean? It basically means that if you, if t intersection g is not empty then you should be able to find an x whose optimal value is actually less than uh, uh, less than the stated value p star ok and that is absurd because p star is the least possible value. So, so consequently this is not possible. So, this is this is is a contradiction. All right. Okay. So now, so what does this mean then? This means that T intersection G is empty. Now T itself, because it's a, it's the kind of segment that I mentioned it from minus infinity. Uh, it's an open segment from minus infinity to be sir. It uh, 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 that so that's uh, that uh, so the set T is a convex set. We just said that we we actually sh just showed that g itself is also a convex set ok. So, t is a convex set g is also a convex set. So, t is a convex set g we showed is a convex set right. So, now, what we have are these two convex sets whose intersection by our claim here is empty. So, there are these, so we have got these two convex sets that uh, that do not intersect, which means what? Which means, uh, so then what, what does that mean? That means that we are in the regime of now the separating hyperplane theorem. What is this saying? So, which means that there exists a separating hyperplane. So, what does this mean? So, there exists a separating hyperplane or a hyperplane separating for T and G. So, there is a hyperplane that separates T and G. So, that means there exists, let us call this, I am going to use this notation lambda tilde theta tilde um, um, uh, say let us call this. Uh, and let us call this mu, mu tilde say such that. So, so there exists this lambda tilde, lambda tilde, theta tilde, mu tilde says that this hyperplane remember from the separating hyperplane theorem says that this hyperplane should have a non-zero slope. So, that means such that this is is not equal to 0 ok. 
and so is a, there is a hyperplane with a non zero slope such that now if i look at the the set g and look at the set uh, t they lie on either side of the hyperplane right so so if i look at the least value of over the hyper, of this hyperplane over the set g so you look at infimum over u v t in g of lambda tilde theta tilde mu tilde transpose u v t this has to be greater than equal to the largest value over u v t of the same function lambda tilde theta tilde mu tilde transpose u v t as as u v t ranges now over t capital T ok. So, this is the separating hyperplane theorem. So, what is this effectively saying that the entire set g lies on one side of it and the entire set t lies on the other side of it and there is a weak inequality here because they could both um, uh, the the infimum and the supremum can end up being equal all right ok. So, now let us evaluate these things carefully. So, u v t belongs to capital T if uh, means what that the it has to be that u and v are 0. So, this particular quantity on the right hand side is actually just supremum over a point supremum over t less than p star ok. So, so u v t uh, belongs to capital T means that u is equal to 0, v is equal to 0 and t is less than p star right. So, it is this t less than p star of mu tilde into t ok. Now, I have not yet we are not yet in a position to evaluate this. So, but so, but let us leave it at this particular stage ok. So, now uh, let us look at the one on the left then what is the uh, what is the one on the left. So, why are we ok just ok yeah why are why are not we in a position to evaluate this let us let us understand this for a moment. So, why are not we in a position to evaluate mu tilde into t. Uh, the sorry the supremum of mu tilde into t over for t less than p star the reason is because we do not know the sign of mu tilde. See if, if the sign of mu tilde is uh, uh, if mu tilde uh, if mu tilde was uh, were positive ok. If mu tilde were positive you would evaluate this this quantity you would you would maximize it by putting t equal to uh, the supremum would uh, would be at t equal to p star. All right. If mu tilde is uh, if mu tilde is negative, all right. If if mu tilde is negative, then the problem becomes very different. So let us just hold our horses here before we analyze uh, before we go ahead and analyze this. So let us first look at what's on the left. Okay, what's on, what is there on the left? Well, this this uh, this whole thing I can I can spread out and and write this a little bit. Um, uh, let us let us write this out in a uh, in a little more explicit form. So, let us write this as lambda tilde transpose u plus theta tilde transpose v plus mu tilde times t as u v t belongs to g ok. So, and uh, so, I, I should put this as a greater than equal to ok. Now, if you look at look at let us observe this particular equation here. So, on this this quantity here this is u v t belongs to g right which means that u can can be uh, so go back to the definition if you go back to the definition see what did I what did we say is uh, how does g look g is unbounded in the u direction. So, whenever there is a u in, in g a larger u can also be fit in because of the way the set has been defined right these inequalities will continue to hold. Similarly, if you have a t uh, uh, in, in g then you can always fit in a larger t. So, so, uh, so what this means is t 
t g is always unbounded in the u and t along the u and t uh, directions going towards plus infinity right so what this means is that if u v t belongs to g if u v t belongs to g here then u and t can be made arbitrarily large okay so these their values can be made arbitrarily large so now yeah, for if their values can be made arbitrarily large what does this mean if their values can be made arbitrarily large what is the what's the only conclusion that can be drawn from here well what the only conclusion that we can have is so if the if these so let us think of it this way so if lambda or if either lambda or mu were negative uh, uh, lambda tilde or mu tilde were negative okay so so if lambda tilde or mu tilde were negative and the f the fact that you can drive u and t all the way to plus infinity would mean that this this the infimum here would be would actually be the infimum here would actually be minus infinity right so if lambda tilde and mu tilde were negative then the infinite infimum here would be minus infinity but then the infimum is lower bounded by some particular finite value here remember so the infimum is lower bounded by some particular finite value which is which is the supremum of this linear function over t right so since this is a supremum the supremum cannot be minus infinity right because it's you can always take any any real value and evaluate it to something finite so so the fact that this is uh, uh, this is lower bounded by some finite value means that you cannot possibly have lambda tilde and mu tilde as negative either of lambda tilde and mu, mu tilde as negative so if lambda tilde less than 0 or mu tilde less than 0 then lhs equals minus infinity which is absurd since rhs is finite since rhs is finite right so if this so this can be minus inf so this cannot be minus infinity right so which means that both lambda tilde and mu tilde are greater than equal to 0 I write this separately lambda tilde greater than equal to 0 and mu tilde also greater than equal to 0 okay so now if mu tilde is greater than equal to 0 then that tells us also something what we about what we what we were talking about here well, if mu tilde is greater than or equal to 0, then the supremum here is to be equal to mu tilde times p star. Okay, so that has simplified our expression a bit. Let me change my color and so you can keep track. Infimum of so the left hand side has now become lambda trans lambda tilde transpose u plus theta tilde transpose v plus mu tilde times t greater than or equal to mu tilde into p star and uh, the infimum here is over u v and t belonging to g okay 